Every attempt at iMessage on Android has been awful. At best, the implementation is complicated and unreliable, and at worst, <laughs> well, it's a downright security disaster. But there is a new app available starting today that is vastly different from every other attempt before it. You don't need to hand over your Apple ID credentials to anybody because this isn't some sketchy relay running on a macOS virtual machine in a data center somewhere. It is a complete reverse engineering of the entire iMessage tech stack, registering your Android's phone number for native Bluebubble support with no middleman in between. Here's how it works once you download and open the app. Step one, sign into your Google account to verify subscription status through the Play Store. Step two, enable notifications. Step three, sign up if you haven't for the $2 per month subscription following a seven day trial. Step four, enable on device permissions to import your previous SMS conversations and your contacts list. And step five, start using iMessage. <laughs> That's literally it. If this sounds too good to be true, I don't blame you, but let me explain everything in detail that you need to know. This new app, Beeper Mini, will be the future replacement for Beeper Cloud, formerly known as Beeper, an app that has integrated a bevy of chat services into one centralized place. Started by Pebble founder and CEO Eric Mijakovsky, Beeper is open source and supports end-to-end -end encryption, but has been mostly cloud-based, requiring that you either host your own bridges or utilize beepers. And until today, just like Sunbird, Nothing Chats, Air Message, and others, Beeper would one, ask you for your Apple ID, two, create a new macOS virtual machine on a real Apple computer in a data center somewhere, three, log into that macOS instance using the Apple ID that you gave them, and then four, relay those messages through that Mac to your Android phone to pretend as though you were an iPhone. Now, Bieber did this a lot more securely than Carl Pay's disastrous, negligent, no good, very bad, nothing chats app that allegedly stored iMessages in plain text on the internet. What the hell, Carl? But users were ultimately still trusting that Eric and the folks at Beeper weren't going to abuse that access. Not really a great system. Beeper Mini flips the idea of this whole thing on its head by doing everything client-side, inside of the Android app, no third party. So your Android phone originates the messages, sends them directly through Apple to the recipient, and then back. No third party relay, as if you were a literal iPhone. I can't reemphasize that enough. So what team of geniuses was required to do the impossible, to reverse engineer iMessage? Well, a single high school student nicknamed JJ Tech. People are bananas. Back in August, this genius published an open source proof of concept, PyPush, that Mijakovsky purchased in order to create the foundation of the all new Beeper. And there's really no better demo than PyPush itself to show you how Beeper Mini and frankly iMessage itself works. And I will run this demo on my System76 Linux laptop just to prove to you that it has nothing to do with Apple hardware. Okay, so after a Git request and cloning of the repo, I need to install some dependencies, which I've done. But then I can CD into the directory, um, and then <laughs> I can launch the demo by typing Python 3 demo, and here you go. We'll see that the first thing I'm immediately shown is being connected to APNs. What are those? Well, that is Apple's push notification service. And if you are an iOS or macOS developer, you know APNs well iMessage uses the same service to receive notifications as regular apps found on the App Store. But what's lesser known is that APNs are actually bi-directional. This will come in handy once we request an authentication token from Apple by entering our Apple ID, our password, hold please, enter, and then it requests my two-factor authentication code, which check it out is right here. And it's not from some weird data center in the middle of nowhere. This is from Salt Lake because again, it is this device here that is doing all of this. I push allow, I enter the code, and we're in the mainframe, boys. Well. 
kind of, not really. What happens is that there is a token that is exchanged when I enter that information, and it is immediately changed into a longer term certificate. And that certificate allows our device to request registration with Apple's identity service. Encryption and signing keys are uploaded from this device to Apple's key server, along with something else that's super important, a validation data blob that Apple uses to Surprise, validate Apple hardware, AKA to make sure you're not running this on, I don't know, a phone that's an Android device or a laptop that's a Linux device. <laughs> the PyPush GitHub repo actually comes with a little file and I can show it to you right here. It's inside of emulated and it's this data.plist that has within it a real serial number and hardware UUID that's already bundled up into a needed validation data blob that they tell Apple falsely, hey, don't worry, we're legit, we're an Apple device. Now, you might be thinking, well, couldn't Apple just ban this specific serial number and UUID server side and break PyPush in like two minutes? Yeah, they could, but they aren't likely to because there are a lot of legitimate reasons for many Apple IDs to use the same hardware keys, from enterprise deployments to white hat bounty programs. In fact, Apple uses a bunch of unknown variables themselves weighted differently to determine the legitimacy of you as a user beyond just the serial number, because it's not a good metric, up to and including your Apple ID, your phone number, your history as an Apple customer, and more. Hackintosh users know this well because they use completely BS fake serial numbers all the time. And Apple goes, okay, cool. Thanks, genuine Apple user. And in the event your Apple ID is brand new and Apple doesn't put any value into you as a customer yet, and your heavily weighted serial number turns up bogus and is rejected, a bunch of things that are unlikely to happen. Even then there are tools that will just generate new serial after new serial after new serial until you find one that's actually tied to a legitimate Mac that exists in the world. It doesn't take as long as you would think. You can just, hijack someone else's machine. In theory, you shouldn't, but you could. And then Apple doesn't even have any way of knowing if you are the owner of the computer or not, at least not currently. Needless to say, this doesn't appear to be some easy thing that Apple can just turn off. It will require a complete redesign of their entire authentication and delivery strategy, not just for iMessage, but for Apple ID account access as a whole. Back to PyPush. Once our session is set up, we can now look up the public keys of someone via phone number or email to see if they have iMessage. We'll do that right now. We type in a telephone number and it goes, yeah, hey, check it out. They are a iMessage user. Once this is determined that they are on iMessage, we can just send them a message. Hi. And they can respond in kind. Hey, there, there it is. Again, this is just using keys and certificates on device, on this computer. And that is the foundation of, well, Beeper Mini. But Beeper Mini is a lot more than just a command line tool. For starters, as mentioned previously, turning over your Apple ID is not required. The Beeper team actually figured out how to register Android phone numbers with iMessage, no Apple hardware required at all. Instant green to blue bubble conversion. That said, you can log into your Apple ID if you would like to use either an email instead of a phone number or, important to me, to send and receive using other Apple devices like the iPad or the Mac. And it just works as if this was an iPhone. So cool. And just with PyPush, Beeper states that your credentials are sent directly to Apple for enrollment and then the certificate and keys are stored strictly on device. The only involvement Beeper has outside of what a normal iPhone might is handling notifications. Because Apple's APNs require a persistent connection, and that they can because they're built into the literal operating system, Beeper couldn't really be a reliable messaging app without running 24 seven in the background, just like PyPush has to on the desktop to continue continue functioning. So to continue supporting push, even when the app is closed or when your phone is off or you've lost service or whatever, Beeper built an APN to BPN, Beeper Push Notification Bridge, for use when Beeper Mini isn't running at all. They connect to Apple's servers on your behalf to listen for messages, and then they push them through Android's FCM notification system to your device. Beeper states that they can do this while maintaining complete privacy because they only receive the push credentials that don't give them access to message content, but does allow them to nudge the Beeper Mini Android app on your phone to number one, wake up and open in the background, number two, to have your phone then send the keys to Apple, and then three, to, well, download, decrypt, and process incoming messages. 
Though they explain this in their documentation and state its security, they do also let you disable them entirely if it's not something that you're comfortable with. Okay, so that's great and all, but I'm not a freaking nerd. What can this app actually do? <laughs> well, I have been using a pre-release version of Beeper Mini for several days now, and it is surprisingly polished. Given that it's actually iMessage, it does the stuff that you would expect iMessage to actually do. It supports not just one-on-one -on -one messaging, but also group chats with group chat titles and participant lists, just like on iOS. High resolution images and video can be sent and received. You can edit messages and you can also unsend them. Read receipts are sent and received. Typing indicators, yeah, those are supported as are tapback reactions. You can reply to threads. There's native support for sending and receiving voice messages, stickers and gifts work, and more. It's amazing how well fleshed out this thing is. Now, there are a few small things that are missing. It will suggest that you share your contact info like on iOS, but instead of doing what an iPhone would do, it just sends your contact V card. Uh, it works, but it's not quite as elegant as the real deal. There's also no live location sharing yet, says Beeper. Interesting. There are no message effects, and obviously there's no support for FaceTime audio or video. Though perhaps Beeper could integrate a web view because that is something that's kind of supported by Apple on Android. But really the only thing that Beeper doesn't think will ever be supported is iMessage games. And well, duh, that makes sense because that's all facilitated through the iOS app store. Beeper Mini is very, very reliable for a 1.0, but it's clearly a 1.0. Beyond the features I listed, you can mark messages as unread and mute threats, but that's basically it. There's no support for standard SMS or RCS. You'll still need to use Google Messenger or an alternative app for that, but it is coming, apparently. Eric tells me that Beeper will be working on moving the rest of their 15 messaging services from their original app into Beeper Mini's new architecture over time. And when the transition is completed, Beeper Mini will just be renamed to Beeper, and the Beeper of yesterday, which is now called Beeper Cloud, will disappear. But I had some questions for Eric, like, uh, you know, is this legal? <laughs> I mean, surely harvesting macOS hardware keys in order to circumvent Apple's entire authentication system must violate some sort of end user license agreement, right? And while they might turn a blind eye to a high schooler doing it for fun with Pi Push, they might not be so forgiving if it's a well-known Silicon Valley entrepreneur monetizing the workaround. While I suppose that Eric can't really be sure Apple won't bully him with a civil case, he does feel pretty confident that at least legally there are protections afforded by DMCA's section 1201F, which states that reverse engineering for the purposes of interoperability is protected. And well, I honestly don't really know if there's a better example of that than Beeper Mini. Frankly, one of the things Eric mentioned that really struck a chord with me as an Apple user is that this isn't just a way to bring blue bubbles to broke boy Android users. It's a way to improve the messaging experience and security for Apple's own users. Apple has intentionally for years made messaging Android users a horrible, insecure experience just because they can. It's the reason why the green bubble thing is a thing. Apple executives talked over 10 years ago about bringing iMessage to competing platforms, but many feel that Apple avoided it for fear of losing customers to Android. If Apple did feel that way, it was irrational and stupid. It was then and it continues to be today because iOS has oodles of amazing features that are worth staying for. And if iMessage really was the only thing keeping users on this side of the aisle, well then boy, Apple is screwed because this won't continue on forever. Now, yes, Apple is bringing RCS to iOS next year, but they're not implementing Google's flavor of RCS with end-to-end -end encryption. They're adopting the older dated version supported by the GSMA. And Apple says that they will be working with the GSMA over the coming years to bring end-to-end -end encryption to the standard as a whole. And I think that'll be a good thing when it happens, but that's not going to happen tomorrow, next month, or probably even next year. You can get a better experience than next year's RCS today. And I think that's wicked cool. Now, a word of disclosure. While Eric has a stellar reputation, has open sourced Beeper Cloud, and will maintain PyPush as an open source project, the Beeper Mini client currently is not open source. And while they invite security researchers to verify their claims and published an internal red team analysis, 
There's always a potential risk when it comes to using third-party apps like this to log in to services without open authorization, like iCloud. If you're interested in playing around with Beeper Mini, you can download it using the links below. It's available now, doesn't have any sign-up limits, and doesn't have any ads or tracking, but does require a paid subscription of $2 per month after that seven-day trial. Uh, this video hasn't been sponsored, by the way. No money has or will change hands, but I just think it's a really cool app, and I'm super excited for a more unified messaging future. Thank you so much for watching. I don't care if you think WhatsApp is better. And as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.